Hi Aquarius, welcome to Higher Source Tarot for your weekly tarot reading. This is for all Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. If you are new to the channel, welcome to you. I'm glad you're here. I post new readings every Friday, then again on Monday. So if a reading doesn't resonate, you can always check back in a couple of days and watch a new reading, check a different part of your chart, or even look around on Mondays because the format is different every Monday. So, um, you know, it's it's always somebody's reading. It's not always everybody's, right? So anyway, um, thanks to everybody for subscribing and watching the readings, hitting that like button, and of course, just, you know, like I said, just watching and supporting. I appreciate that. And if you like tarot and you like this channel, I'd love to invite you to join us and subscribe. Then you'll know when anything new is posted. All right. What advice do you have for Aquarius? Sun, moon, rising, and Venus. What does Aquarius need to know, please? What messages do you have for Aquarius? All right, so we'll begin here with the tarot, and then we'll have the angel answers, um, oracle cards. Oh, I love this. You've got the star, the tower. Oh, this is interesting. Now, normally, the star comes after the tower. I don't think that's a big deal. We'll talk about it in a minute, that they're uh, technically out of order. But anyway, the lovers, the fool, holy cats, the nine of pentacles, the two of wands, the... Knight of Wands. Wow, this is awesome. What a beautiful reading. I mean, to have four major arcana come out right in the row, you get a big transition. It is going to be amazing, though. I feel like this is going to be a time in your life that you will never forget. It's it's beautiful. So you've got, obviously, you've got Aquarius. You've got Gemini here. You have Fire, Aries, Leo, Sag. You've got Earth and Water here, too. You've got a commitment here. You know, when we look at these I mean, I don't want to get into this too far ahead, but, you know, when we look at this kind of energy, there's something really beautiful here, you know, with this, even the tower, I don't mind it. I mean, I don't see that as something to shy away from, but it's like this beautiful, loving, healing energy. And it's like you're, you're, it's like the, a brand new, even if it's reconciliation for you, but it's like, it's the first time, you know, the beginner's mind shows up here with the fool and it's something where there's a brand new clean slate. So this is all about renewal. For some of you, it, it's about your personal renewal. And so you're feeling better than you've ever felt. You're feeling like times in your life, you know, people periodically look back and say, oh God, you know, I see, look at pictures and I was skinny then and I thought I was fat and you know, whatever, that kind of stuff. Or I, I thought things could be better and they were so good. This is feeling like, you know what, this is it. I feel good all the way around. I feel harmonious in flow. It's really a, a card, too, of wish fulfillment. So I do feel like anything that you've had, if you've had a major upheaval or major change or even just a turning point, you're in this place where it brings in so much more. And so it is a card of self-acceptance, of love, self-love, healing yourself, healing any relationships around you, and really being in concert with the universe. You know, she stands, she keeps one foot on this pull of consciousness for balance, but the other is on earth. So it's bringing heaven to earth. It's bringing the, you know, the universal laws into your day-to-day -day being and really operating from that place of understanding. So we like the tower because it's a wake-up call that knocks the ego, knocks that crown the lightning bolt is the universe and the, the crown is the ego. And so it's being less of the mind and more of the spirit. It's also too represents wisdom. So anything you went through, if there was a job loss or what felt like loss of a relationship, it brings in something better in its place. Whatever this was, was not sustainable. So in a relationship too, if you had somebody who was very in and out and wanting it to be more, it just was not going to happen that way. Um, and so there may be a new, for some, it is a new love and it's so much more stable. And you'll think, what was I ever doing with that schmuck? Or what was I ever doing with that person? You know, that just wasn't, they weren't delivering and they kept trying and investing. Well, this is that universal force that says you have some, we have something else over here for you. There's something better over here. Come this way. 
And so it's about opening up and listening to and seeing all the signs around you. So the lovers is a beautiful energy. Of course, it's guided by Archangel uh, Raphael here. And it's a, a card that is about choices, about making decisions to love, decisions to invest in a relationship. Some of you, there may be some obstacle in the relationship. If it's just a schedule thing, it could feels like that. Like it's something like making time for each other with busy schedules. But this is also a card for some, you're manifesting a relationship. It, Adam represents the conscious mind influencing the subconscious, which, which is Eve and connecting to the archangel, which is the divine. And so it's really about harnessing your own creative or co-creative abilities. And so with this, so it's a relationship that changes your life. Like I said, this is going to be a very important period in your life that you'll never forget. I feel like there's this trajectory going on here around you that it's putting you on course. Not like we really ever get too far off, but when we're not in alignment, we have a lot of, lot of issues that can come up. So in a job too, though, it, it can be a new job that, again, changes things dramatically for you. So the fool shows up, it's pure potential, it's releasing all resistance, it's freedom. It's also too though in a relationship, not having judgment, not finding fault, not looking for problems in people. You have a completely open mind and an open heart here. So you're ready to embrace love, you're ready to embrace change. In a work situation, you're very easy going, you're easy to get along with, you come in excited to be there, happy to be there. Really, wherever you're going when you're in this energy, you're full of enthusiasm and trust. And it's a card of purity, of innocence. But there's nothing here to threaten you. So it's okay to kind of let your guard down and be in a situation and have some fun. You know, it's a card where you're very approachable to an energy where you're very approachable. Um, but there's definitely a transition coming here. So the Nine of Pentacles... For some of you, it may represent, if you've been single, that you've been single but enjoying it. It's a card of having social opportunities, abundance around you, loyal people, and also money. You know, this is a card of luxury. So feeling like you have more than enough, having money show up in terms of, it can be work-related. So if you lost a job, getting a better one, getting more opportunities. And I, I'm seeing that quite a bit, actually, but... In general, that's what the card represents. And for some, it may be about buying things too. Having that money, but not being afraid to spend it. And it's there's no four of pentacles here. So there's no, you know, trying to stack up the resources. It's like it's here. You understand the frequency of money. You're in flow with it. And so if you spend it, more keeps coming back in. It's not um, reckless by any means, but it's just having fun. So the two of wands comes in and it's, really that visionary energy. And so it, in a career, it's having a vision and doing the next right thing to get to the next place in the career. He holds the world in one hand, but he wants a bigger world. So you're in an ever expanding energy with this Aquarius. And especially if you're in something where you have to communicate a lot, like if you're in any kind of sales, I feel like you're going to have a lot of um, business transactions, new clients, and you're going to start to feel a little bit pulled, not in a bad way, but it's like there's just a lot of opportunities showing up here. Now, in a relationship, though, it's also about looking forward together and and building a future. And it's you're having fun in the meantime, though. It's not too serious. It's not, you know, with anxiety, how is this going to work? It's for some, again, if there's distance in the relationship, too, it may be like looking forward and expecting that next you know, time when you're together. So the Knight of Wands comes in. He gets kind of a bad rap because he can be a bit, oh, arrogant. Um, but it, it too, it may be an indication too, just to be kind of aware of that as the momentum picks up, not to get too far out of center um, and not to get going so that you feel like you're kind of off kilter a little bit. Uh, but with the Knight of Wands, it's also very passionate energy. Knights have good intentions, all right? So we've got the Knight of Wands and the Knight of Cups. The Knight of Wands is excited. This is somebody that's fun to date, somebody who's fun to go out with, right? So in a relationship, it's getting out there, it's having fun and having a passionate connection too. There's a synergy here. 
in this reading, this, you, you know, and there's not just love, but there's a, um, there's a charge here in terms of how you connect energetically. So the Knight of Cups brings in an offer of commitment, love, stability, well thought out. Again, though, it's like visualizing. So if you're going, God, I don't know who this is. I love this reading. I want it to be mine. Well, you're in the reading. You know, this is about getting that picture in your mind and seeing it through your first person reality. And the reason why that first person is so important is that is what connects with the subconscious. So the subconscious has no idea you haven't experienced this yet when you feel all the feelings. The subconscious thinks then this must be so because you've now told it. You're programming your own subconscious. And so what I think throws people off is the subconscious get it, it starts getting programmed in the womb, right? So we have other people giving us programs. And then once we start to take over the reins, we just think, oh, this must be how it's supposed to be. But you have lots of power over that area of your life or over that part of who you are. So let's see about a timeline here for Aquarius. All right, you have here, the situation will improve. Well, anything with the tower, again, that's that corporate raider, brings it down to build it back up. So I wouldn't I, I wouldn't shy away from that energy. I'd embrace it. You have peaceful resolution. So if there's some kind of an issue with the tower and the lovers um, and the star too, if there's something that needs to be healed or mended or a conversation, like, because the lovers does show an obstacle. If there's something with that for you, again, it's improving and healing. You've got recovery. I haven't seen this in a while. Um, so with this, this can be a spiritual recovery, all right? So if you, I mentioned getting back to center. If you felt like you were way off energetically, this brings you back into the place where you're more centered, grounded, and feeling connected with the universe and not so much in the mind. So you've got in the near future, things are definitely moving forward for you. And you've got a yes, okay? So you've got that emphatic, you do create your own reality. So what do you want, Aquarius? See it in your mind, feel it like it's already here and it's yours, it manifests. So good things are on the way for you. I love you, Aquarius, and I'll be back again soon.